Subscribe to our channel, like our videos, turn on the notification button because the destination is Varsity! Yes! <laughs> so last time we touched on uh, the straight line function, we did touch on the straight line function. We did touch on the straight line function, we did touch on the parabola, but we didn't dive in deep on how to really plot the parabola. And we also touched on the hyperbola, but we didn't touch on the shifts. We didn't touch on the exponential inverse and with trick functions, those are included in paper two. So we'll skip these ones and then go to what? And then go to uh, the, last, uh, the last type of functions, which are um, cubic functions. So we'll just go to what? To cubic functions instead of uh, touching uh, trick functions. We'll touch on trick functions when we're dealing with paper two. So I'll just skip through the notes that we had developed yesterday. Oh, let me just delete all of them. Let me just delete all of them. Let me just delete all of them. Okay, so we create space for ourselves. Yeah, let's just delete all of these notes. Okay, okay, okay. So as i have just said that we didn't touch on how to plot a parabola and how to plot how to recognize the shifts in in your hyperbolas etc so we need to deal with that shortly we need to deal with that shortly let's start with the with the parabola number uh it's the parabola let's start with the parabola parabola if you recall exactly, a parabola is denoted as f at x equals a x squared plus b x plus c. Or you can say your f at x is equal to a into x minus, uh, up to you generally, up to you which alphabet you want to use. But generally they use p and q, x minus p plus q. Né? How do you move? I, I showed you how to move from uh, from this guy over here to this guy over here. But now one would be wondering, how do you move from this guy? Say you're given an equation in this format. Now you're going to change it to this format. How do you do that? Okay, cool. We know, we know exactly that um, for our turning point, for our turning point, to determine the x-coordinates of the turning point, we take this guy over here, like this part over here, this part over here, we equate it to zero. So we literally say x minus p equals zero. Therefore, the x coordinates of the turning point will be p. Né? Say you had a minus two here, or you had a two, that means you, you, you are gonna have x minus two equals zero. Therefore, your x coordinate of the turning point was gonna be two. If you had an x plus two, like an x plus 2 here, that means you're going to say x plus 2 equals 0. Therefore, your x coordinates of the turning point is going to be minus 2. So whatever is in here, irrespective of the sign, you take it, equate it to 0 to find what? The x coordinates of the turning point. Okay, cool. Now say you're, you were given an equation in this format. In this format. How do you then convert it to this format? But before we dive into that, you need to know that this Q over here, this guy over here, is your Y coordinates of the turning point. So the turning point Y coordinates is your, your Y of the turning point is equal to Q. Né? You take it as it is. Any value that's here, you take it as it is. So that means the coordinates of the turning point, you have P and Q. Né? Those are the coordinates of the turning point. But for you to determine P, 
you need to do what you need to equate whatever is in here whatever is in here equate it to zero and then solve for x you know what i'm saying yeah but if you are if you are giving your, your equation in in this format in this format to determine the turning point without you having to move to this uh to this uh to this guy over here like to the second format there is a formula that has been developed for matriculant so you just use this formula uh x of the turning point if the if the equation is given as ax squared ax squared plus bx plus c then x of the turning point will be equal to minus b over 2a ne? that's how you determine it so this is the x coordinate of the turning point how do you determine the y coordinate whatever value you're gonna get from here you plug it back in the original equation whenever you are not determined why you plug it you plug your x in the original equation it's simple as that but now since we are heading to 100 percent some people might be uh, you know might be curious how to convert uh, the format that's given like the first format to the second format okay say you had f at x equals a x squared plus b x plus c what you do here they i think they call it completing the square but you literally focus on on this segment here just focus on this only and leave the c for now what do i mean by doing that let's just do it now so you're literally gonna be having take a as a, as take a as your as your common factor so take it out of the system so it'll be literally a let's say in your bracket now you'll have x squared plus b over a x then you'll have a plus c ne? right so after this you literally have your f at x is equal to a then you try and convert this into a more like a quadratic format if you get what i'm saying Con convert this into more like a quadratic format so you literally have your x squared you like a c here right uh plus b over a so what you do here is you take this guy over here you divide it by a two ne? then you square it so you literally have a plus okay let's use the same color let's use the same color for simplicity purposes okay for simplicity purposes okay okay let's use the same color let's use the same color okay 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 why is technology trying to fail us now <laughs> okay let me just erase it because it doesn't wanna, it doesn't want me to undo what i did okay let's just erase it using the old method let's just erase this so what you do now you literally um need to divide this uh this guy by two divide it by two and square it so you divide it by two and square it so it's gonna be plus um b over 2a ne? all squared ne? but now your equation is not balanced so to undo what you just did then you minus the same thing so it's more like you didn't do anything ne? minus what minus what b over 2a all squared then you close your bracket then you say plus a c ne? so that's how that's how that's how that, that's the next step so now how do you then make it look like the second format so let's um let's 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 head straight to that you have your f at x right you have your f at x you have your f at x equals a you have your x squared let's focus on the first segment over here right just just this guy over here ne? and and leave this one for a second you have your you have your you have your x squared which can be written as x if you if you were if you're tasked to find factors of this you are gonna have x plus 
b over 2a x plus b over 2a minus b over 2a what all what okay 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 minus b over 2a all what all squared then you plus yourself a c plus c then you say plus a c ne? plus a c most people might be wondering how did i get how did i move from this step to this step how how does that like work now okay let's just um let's just um solve it on the side so we we educate everyone if you in case you in case you're wondering so if you take this part over here only if you focus only on this part you have your x squared plus b over a x plus b squared over 4 a squared right you have something like this né? so to look for factors you know the factors of x if you were to open bracket it's going to be x and x and factors of b squared and 2a if what what which, which things can you multiply to give you b squared and 2a such that when you add them they give you this uh this middle term so you have to you have to have b over 2a because when you say uh, plus b over 2a even this side because when you say b over 2a times b over 2a you're getting b squared over 4a squared but if you say b over 2a plus b over 2a you're getting what b over a so that's how i got into this format ne? i hope that's clear so how do you know which one to use now between the two because you literally have plus b squared plus b over 2a squared and you also have a minus b over 2a uh, all squared depending on the sign of this guy here if there was a negative here we're gonna we we're gonna open bracket using the negative sign but since there was a positive here we only focused on the one that had a positive sign that's how you decide which one you use in your in your quest to open brackets né? okay 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 so now you have your um f at x equals a what are you noticing here this thing is repeated twice it's here and it's also here né? it's here and it's also here so you can literally have your um x plus b over 2a all squared right you can write it like this minus b over 2a squared né? just write it like this né? and then don't forget to to add your c again plus your c né? okay 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 now let's simplify our 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 newly formed equation you now have um f at x equals you just multiply inside uh, by your a né? you multiply inside by your a right you multiply inside by your a so you literally have your a multiplying this guy over here and your a multiplying this guy over here to kill the solid bracket so now you'll have your f at x equals a x plus b over what over 2a all squared minus a times b over 2a this was all squared then you'll have your plus c that you already had you remember initially we had a plus c over here we had a plus c over here right so you just dropped it here it's, it's still the same thing okay 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 there's one or two things that you need to notice now you need to notice that this equation is heading to where we want it to head you have now your f at x equals um a x plus b over 2a what are you noticing about this one about this guy over here these are just constants right so they prefer writing this as a q like you know an alphabet you're grouping this thing as a q so q is equal to this one 
one might then now might then now see that if you are not a new Q, you can use you can use this uh this equation. But then it's complex. Q is generally given. You have a squared here, right? So in simpler terms, because you don't want to write lots of things, you can have a equals x, and then instead of uh, writing plus b over two a, you can say plus p or something. Ne? Plus p squared then plus q. So now, how did they come about uh, saying your x coordinates uh, of the turning point is equivalent to minus b over two a? You remember what I said? I said. If you're not determining the x-coordinate of the turning point, you equate this guy over here to zero, right? So that means if you say x plus b over 2a equals zero, therefore your x is going to be equal to minus b over 2a. Yeah? So that's how you generally determine your turning point, yeah? your x-coordinate of the turning point. And then your y-coordinate will be equal to q, generally given. Yeah? Yeah, or if it was not given, it was given in this format, a x squared plus b x plus c, you are going to plug in whatever value you're going to get here in the original equation to determine the y value. No? Okay, okay, okay. That's how, that's how you determine turning points of the, of, the, of the parabola, of the parabola. But you also need to be aware that you, for you to plot a, a graph like a parabola, you need at least three points you need the turning point and uh, not three point four points in fact you need that you need the one two uh, x x intercept you also need the y intercept you also need a turning point somewhere sometimes your graph might look might look like this so you need your y intercept your x intercept your turning point and your x intercept again so once you have those three points and then you look at the value of your a. If your a is greater than zero, that means the shape of your graph is, is this way. If your a is less than zero, that means the shape of your graph is this way. It will become more clear once you start solving problems. I'm just recapping those who might have missed it in their early, you know, early metric stages or grade, uh, grades uh, who might have missed these basics in their early grades. Okay, okay, let's head now to the, to the hyperbola. You remember in our hyperbola we had um it was written in this format in our hyperbola 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 you literally had um f at x equals you had f at x f at x equals um a x plus p plus q ne? Okay, how do you then, how do you then now, um, how do you then now determine the, the asymptotes? Because now you, you literally, you literally know that when you're plotting a hyperbola, it should have two asymptotes, the x asymptote and the y asymptote. To determine the x asymptote, the, the logic still stands. You literally, you literally have to equate this guy again, this guy over there. You equate it to what? To zero, ne? And for your y asymptotes, and then you solve for x. So it's going to be x plus p equals zero. Therefore, x is called minus p. Let's say minus p is here. Then you know that my graph doesn't touch here. So this is my x asymptotes, ne? And for your asymptotes, you take your p, a q as it is. Say your q was here. Then your asymptotic line will also be here. If your a was greater than zero, it was going to be here, right? As we discussed in the last lecture, depending on your x and y intercepts, it's gonna maybe flow like this. If your y, your x intercept is here, then it's gonna flow like depending on the intercept. How do you determine the x intercept? You let y equals zero. Determine the y intercept. You let x be equal to zero. So now, one thing I wanted to ask to quickly dive into is the following. So. Since you have your hyperbolic equation being equals a equals x plus p plus q, there is this thing called the shift, shifting your graph. So now, they say if you wanna shift your graph, um, like you shift your asymptotic line along the x-axis, ne, you literally add or subtract things in your p-value, ne. So you might find. In other equation, they say um, the newly formed equation is in this form. 
maybe say f at no maybe let's say let's say g of x g of x is equal to f at x plus two then they say determine the new equation for for x asymptotes you'll be like okay cool you know that f at x minus two wherever there is x x plus two you wherever there is x we plug in x plus two so you literally now have your a all over x plus two right plus what plus p because you you already had a p here ne? then plus q then uh you have a yeah it's literally that so how do you determine the the um the x coordinate or the x uh, equation the, the the x is uh the asymptotic line in the, that, that 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 passes through the x axis how do you determine the equation of that you still use the same logic you equate everything that is here to zero ne? so you're literally gonna say um x plus two x plus two plus p equals zero therefore your new equation will be minus p minus two so how are you noticing here what are you noticing here let's go back to our original equation so they are saying here now not original per se but they are saying now here you minusing a two again so that means you moving what two units to the left ne? You know what I'm saying? So that means your new asymptotic line will now be here. Will now be here. Will now be here, right? At, at minus P minus 2. So one thing that I wanted to tell you by making this example is that if you adding here, like adding a number, you must know that your graph, your graph is being shifted those units to the left. But if they say, if they had said, um, Instead of having a, a minus two, they had like x minus maybe minus um minus two minus two plus p like f at x f at oh sorry sorry if they say g of g of x g of uh, g of x is equal to f at x minus two you must know that your graph now is shifted what two units to the right ne? so that's what I wanted to derive. And then if they said, if they said, um, your, your h at x is equal to f at x plus 2. What does that mean? That means your graph is shifted two units upwards. Ne? And if they said your maybe k of x is equal to f at x minus 2. That means your graph is shifted two units downwards. So those are the shear sets you need to know in your in your um in your in your hyperbola. And also they might say they might say um okay let's delete this guy. They might say um your j at x is equal to negative of f of x. So what does that mean now? It's more like they just flipped the graph. Whatever was positive in your f at x will now be negative. Whatever was positive was negative will now be positive. So they just reflected your graph, something like that. But it becomes more clearer once you do the example. Let's head to the last two bits of the of the of, of, of the function types before before we dive into questions, because the cubic is more like linked to other like you generally do it once you've done your derivatives, your calculus. So at this point, we'll just pause by the inverse function. It's literally simpler. When you when you plot your your graph for uh for the exponential function, which is our function type number four, exponential. You need to know some few things, ne? very very easy it is very 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 easy your exponential function generally looks like this ne? it generally what looks like this say this was your this was your y and this was your x ne? it generally looks like that say now let's make a generic example of the of the exponential function it says f at x equals 
B or X. B is just an integer, right? B is just a just a random value, like one, two, four. It can be any value, but it can't be. Yeah, can be two upwards. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, what does this thing tell you now? Let's say B plus um, let's say B plus plus Q or something. Yeah? So how do you then unpack this? If your B is greater than zero, your graph will look like this, right? What does what does what what does Q tell you? Q is your Y asymptote. You only have one asymptote here. So if your if your Q is let's say if we're making a generic example, say you had um, f at x equals um, two to the power of x uh, plus four. You'll know that your graph, your graph will look something like this. Ne? These are your x axis. These are your y axis. So this is your four. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It will look something like this. Then you determine your your y intercept by letting x be zero, right? So it's gonna be touching. I think it's five. Ne? So it's gonna be touching here. So the coordinates here will be what? Will be um zero is to five if I'm not mistaken. That's how your graph will generally look. So with the exponential, you can even play with your calculator if you're given an equation and be like, okay, this guy over here is positive. Oh, okay. So that means now if this guy is positive, that means the shape is like this. Where is my X, my, my Y asymptote? Okay, is it is here. Where is my, uh, my Y intercept? Okay, it is over there. Okay, cool. Do I have any x intercepts? If my y asymptote is above zero, it means I won't have any x intercepts if the shape is like this. But if my y asymptote maybe was sitting over here, maybe as a minus four, something like this, and the shape was still the same, you're gonna anticipate that you'll have your y intercept and your x intercept, right? So the same logic still holds. To determine your x intercept, you let y be zero. To determine your y intercept, you let x be zero. Okay, cool. Let's head straight now to the inverse of this because they generally enjoy asking you about inverses of the exponential function. Okay, 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 okay. What is an inverse? So it's more like you flipping x for y. So if you had um, f at x be equal to b to the power of x, what's the inverse of this? Because you know f at x is the same as y, ne? So that means you have y equals what? B to the power of x, ne? So now they'll ask they'll ask you to determine, they'll be like determine, determine f prime of like a, like the inverse of x, not f prime, because f prime is something else. The inverse of a, of, of f at x. What you need to do. You know, in f at x, originally you have x, y, ne? It's more like now you're transferring instead of, of x, you have your y. Instead of your instead of your y, you have your x, ne? So that's what that's what the inverse chain basically do. It, do. it does that. Okay, cool. So that means now your new equation will be equal to x equals uh, b to the power of y. But generally, you want to have y as a subject of the formula. Then... In metric, you, you can use your logs, your log rules. So it, it stays the same. If you master how to use it now, you'll, you'll never get it wrong. So it's literally going to be you adding this log sign. You'll be like log base of this number of B, X. What you do on the right, you also have to do on the left. Ne? What you do on the left, you have to do on the right. Okay, cool. You have B, then B to the power of Y. According to the log rules, if you have log base in bracket, then ba that base again to the power of something, the answer you're going to get is that power. You're going to get this. Ne? You can test in your calculator. Just say log, log 4 in bracket 4 to the power of 5. You know the answer will be 5. So that means your answer then now boils down to log b x. And this is your inverse function. Ne? How does it generally look? 
I mean, you can plot it using your calculator, but generally you should know that your inverse um, will generally look um, will generally look like this. Let's use the blue x y. So your inverse will generally look like this. Ne? And then I ask you some simple questions. What's the domain of your function? What's the range of your function? What is a domain? A domain is a set of all x values that are applicable in your system. You see that this function, it doesn't go to the negative side. Now you can test it. Just plug, just plug maybe, uh, like let's say your b was 2, ne? and then plug a negative value here. You'll see it'll give you an error because an inverse doesn't go out. Onto the like log doesn't accept uh, negative numbers, so that means now the the domain of this function the domain you will be like x is an element of real numbers, but x should be greater than zero. You get what I'm saying? And the range or uh, range just y is an element of real numbers. That's it. All y values are applicable because it's because it can go in the positive side and in the negative side. But with the x, it's only in the positive side. Let's go back to our other functions and see if we can determine the domain and the range. So when you look at this function that we plotted here, the domain of this function, you see it's all, it can be found on this side. And Sorry, this is negative. It can be found on the negative side and also it can be found on the positive side. That means X is an element of real numbers, positive and negative. Some they write it like this. They write it like negative infinity to positive infinity ne? with 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 open brackets. Ne? I mean, it's up to you, but I just prefer writing as an element of real numbers. And what about y? Do you see that y values less than minus 4 in this one, in this case, are not applicable? So you can say y is an element of real numbers, but y should be greater than minus 4. Ne? Some they would prefer writing it this way. That, that's the range, ne? Some they'll prefer writing minus 4 and then all to positive infinity, something like that. So it starts from minus 4 all the way to positive infinity, ne? Yeah, so those are just generic terms that you need to, to master uh, before you, you tackle questions. Yeah, let's just now head straight to question. Let's delete whatever we wrote as our notes. And start solving problems because that's what's most interesting. You can study notes for days, but if you can't solve problems, it's more like you didn't do anything, right? Okay, let's let's delete, 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 delete. Let's delete. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, thank you for watching, like, 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 comment, 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 and subscribe to our channel.